Eddie. Yes, mate. How you doing? Mate, I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. That's that's great to hear. You Welcome hungry yet? to the Joe and Andy show again. Mate, I'm always hungry. You're always hungry. Um, I'm hungry. I'm hungry to know where does commission actually come from? Yeah, right. So, um, real estate hasn't changed much in the you know, 50, 60, 70, 100 odd years, 200 years that it's, it's been around. So, um, I couldn't tell you exactly when it started, but I mean, it was commonplace to be charging, you know, 2%, 2.5%, 3%, yep. you know, back before the 50s or you know, before the Great Depression or World War One and Two, and like there was, you know, charges being charged the same way back then as they are today. Yep. And I think that's a really fundamental problem with, with the real estate industry is that they have really failed to evolve with the time. So, you know, you can imagine a home in the 1950s and 60s, you know, I remember my grandparents buying homes for, you know, $20,000. Yeah, and the agent. Home. Yeah, or the agent getting, you know, two and a half percent of that. Yeah. And now fast forward to, you know, 2020, I think, you know, my grandparents' home, you know, God rest their souls, today would probably be, you know, two and a half million dollar house. Yeah. And the commission <laughs> is still the two and a half percent. It's just ridden um, price growth. Yeah, yeah, so with the price growth, of the properties and you look at the you know the median sale price throughout you know history mm-hmm. it's grown dramatically and the commissions have rode the wave all the way up you know and, and you know i think if you look back in history and you look at the the profession as a real estate agent it's definitely got flashier and it's got more trendy yeah. um you know i remember you know when i was a kid and you looked at a real estate agent yeah i mean they always wore suit and tie and that sort of stuff but it wasn't really this culture that you had to rock your Gucci shoes and your Rolex watches. I used watches. to think it was a bit daggy, cheesy, tacky. Yeah. Was my, but the age we live in now, it's like it's the million dollar listings. That's right. Kind of yeah. generation and the, you know, the Rubenstein and the Fox and, Absolutely. you know, that sort of, yeah, that sort of image. It has really been glamorized and that's been really, truly because the earning potential is really, really huge. Um, you know, and in some cases, you know, the East Sydney average median price is probably, you know, four or five million dollars thereabouts and 2% of that is, you know, eighty, ninety thousand yeah. dollars That's a lot of money, you know. So this sensationalism and this sexiness of real estate has really come off the back of the commission staying exactly the same and being charged the same as it was in the 50s. Yeah. Um, but, you know, has ridden the price growth um, throughout that 60 year period. Well, I mean, the thing with a lot of, for a lot of people, the impression is that the commission is the motivation. Absolutely. As well. Absolutely. So it's like, well, if you're not getting charged commission for something, how are you motivated to get the the best um, price? And that's not just in real estate, obviously. I mean, commission is a thing in most sales jobs, but there's not that many jobs that are like commission only structured as in no sales yeah. no pay absolutely so um you know it's very common practice in the industry that you know high performance agents are on a commission only uh, yeah. wage because then they essentially become their own entity and they sort of write their own paycheck um and obviously that lessens the risk for the owner and also minimizes the, the chance of underperforming um, agents that are going to sit on their payroll yeah. and cost them money as where you know on a commission only um, scenario they're going to be a high performance agent and they're motivated by obviously making as much money as possible but you know us here at Sydney listings we saw that as a huge fundamental problem for the customer you know it's all well and good to have this sexy industry that you know you can rock your, your Patek Philippe watch or your Rolex watch and yeah. you know spend 100 grand on a Euro trip every year and you know, wear four thousand dollar suits and so forth, but where's the benefit to the customer? You know, is it truly a case that just because they're earning commission, yeah. the customer's really getting the best possible deal? Yeah. You know, um, and well, I mean, sorry to cut you off, but almost yes. certainly not. I mean, I know from personal experience, the people I want to fight harder to get their price up for is when I don't care. Mm, not when I care about my pot I mean and then it's that's almost an afterthought when you're earning commission honestly yeah. you're like oh cool 
we've got this high price, I'm going to get a little bit more myself as well. Absolutely. To me, it's very much, that doesn't apply to everyone, but that's the truth. Yeah, it can, there's a motivation there, but I think people overestimate, people normally overestimate financial incentives, the power they have. I think, I think they're there, they, they are motivating, but I think if you actually care about getting the price, that's going to motivate you a lot better than commission ever will. Look, there's, it's part of the culture of the industry, I guess, as to the way that perception is. But, you know, how many times have you been in a restaurant and you get good service? Or how many times have you been in a clothing yeah. store and you get great service? Yeah, they're not getting 2% of a house. They're not getting you know, $50,000. Sometimes so the service talking, will be better. 100%, <laughs> you know? So why does it have to be the case that we charge that sort of money? And why does it have to be the case that the agent needs to earn that sort of money and sell a home when, you know, we should be building a culture that recognizes good people and pushes good people to get good results for the average person because the reality is that there's plenty of people out there that are happy to earn you know a hundred thousand dollar salary or whatever that may be and you know imagine you know your normal retail manager that's a superstar you know they probably only earn fifty sixty thousand dollars a year but their beliefs and their work ethic and you know their um, people pleasing skills can translate into this industry very very well yeah and you know, I think the culture in real estate really needs to start evolving with the times and getting behind the customer more. It's not just about how much money can I put in my wallet, you know. Yeah. Let's be on the on the forefront of change and let's mm. sort of push to make sure that the well, customer's actually I'll first. Put it, I'll put, it, put that idea to you another way. A lot of people will grow up to be, want to become a doctor, for example. A lot of people will say they want to grow up to become a doctor because they'll earn a good living. A lot of people want to become a doctor because they want to help people. Yeah. And there's some mishmash of both, obviously. Absolutely. So my question would be, how many people grow up wanting to be a real estate agent because they want to help people? Yeah, not many. Not many. You know, I think the attraction for real estate really is the flashy suits, the nice cars, you know, the holidays, the Rolexes. And, you know, it's really got this sex sex appeal to a lot of people and it's that's why people are attracted to it it's not it's yeah. not because they truly want to change people's lives it's yeah. because of the earning potential yeah. you know and there's very little um you know there's not many fences you need to jump to actually become a real estate agent you can become a real estate agent in two hours yeah you know so yeah. i mean to be in a position where you could earn more than a doctor and only have to study for a couple of hours to become a real estate agent is highly attractive yeah. but that stuff is changing and you know i think Part of our philosophy and what we're building is really putting the customer first. You know, you look at the, the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon, and his number one philosophy is, how can I make it better for the customer? Yeah. You know, he's, he's said, you know, every customer is going to want it faster and they're going to want it cheaper and that will never yep. change. Yep. But real estate's failing to actually jump on board with those There's sort of things. That principle, no. Definitely not. Definitely not. They're all about their wallets, for sure. Yeah. Oh, you're still here? Wait, I haven't seen you subscribe yet. Go ahead and subscribe. Oh, and while you're at it, why don't you follow us on Instagram too? Sounds like a good idea? Sounds like a good idea. See you soon.